Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about what you do when you have multiple experimental files from repeated experiments and you want to use that information for your material model calibration. I often recommend do at least two or three repeated experiments for each test condition so you can see how much variability you have in repeated tests and that will help you understand how accurate your material model needs to be. But I never really talked about what you do with all of these repeated tests. And there really are a few different options here. So I'm going to talk about that in this short video. So here's an example. This is a thermoplastic material that I tested in uniaxial compression. There are four repeated tests. And they look pretty similar here. So one choice, the first way to do this is to simply use all the tests at once. So I can just read all of these in, into M calibration here. I select the material model and I calibrate the material model such that it matches all of this data all at once in some average way because you can't fit all of them because there's some variability, but it can match the data in some best possible way, one can argue. So that's one choice. Simply use all the data at once. The, the problem here, of course, is that it slows it down a little bit because it needs to analyze all of the different ex uh, repeated experiments. So that's why sometimes what I do, and uh, this is option two, you simply try to find which of these curves is in the middle, the median curve. So I'm looking at these curves here. There's one here, there's one here, and there is this one, and then we have this one. This one here seems to be kind of in the middle over here. It looks kind of perhaps it's in the middle in different places. So one could argue, well, this is the one I want to use. It seems to be sort of in the representative curve of the different ones that I tested. And uh, you can use uh, a little bit more sophistication by looking at these curves and uh, selecting the median that way. But the point is, if you use a median curve, you can just use one curve, and that's an actual curve that you measured, and then you say, that's the what I want to calibrate my material model to. But there is a third choice that not everyone knows about, and that's what I want to talk about next. So of these curves, one of the curves we're actually going to neglect because that test was truncated early on. So when I calculate an average curve, I don't want to use this one. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to select these three remaining curves. I'm going to ask M calibration to combine these curves into a average curve. And here are some options for how to do that. And then I do that, M calibration will calibrate uh, or create an average curve based on all of the other curves. The other curves are still here. They are automatically turned off, but I can turn them on again. And here's the new curve. To see it better, I'm just going to change how it's plotted here. I'm going to make this a dark color. I'm going to make it thicker. And I'm going to make it dashed so we can see it a little bit better. So the red curves are the individual test. The black curve is an average curve based on the other curves that are available. So this is an, a third choice that you can do in M calibration. If you don't want to find a, a median curve, you can have M calibration calculate the actual average curve. And uh, the median curve sometimes could have the problem too, of course, is that there are two curves in one area and the third curve or could be in a different place. So the median may not be the best choice and average may be hypothetically better. There is a problem with an average curve in this case. Uh, when we have a strain reversal, experimentally we have a sharp turn in the stress strain curve. But when M calibration calculates the average curve, it tends to be rounding out corners of stress strain curves a bit. So that's a problem, particularly when you have cyclic loading, where you do a load and load with sharp corners in stress strain curves. If it's a smoother stress strain curve, then the, the, the average curve may be a little easier to use. But those are the three choices. Um, I personally often use all the data, but if it's too slow for me, then I simply use the median. That's kind of my approach. But you should try this out yourself. See which approach you like. The options are available, and uh, that will help you calibrate the best possible material model with the least amount of effort. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.